Black History Month is intelligence, resiliency, integrity, acceptance, empowering, innovative, remembrance, identity, equity, freedom, love. 26 House wants to say thank you to all those who have come before us in the African American community and celebrate and embrace Black History.
together. We stand united as a community of Magic fans with a common passion and love for the game. We cheer together from our living rooms, chat rooms, and in the arena, on the court and off the court. Together, we are strong. Together, we overcome. We are Magic Together. to crack an egg easy any style egg works here. or a smile well done this looks great time to share a story we have a great way to start our discussion with old friends Canada. or new ones when you're a caregiver time to breathe in good job then let it all out Rah! it's never been easier to connect learn and have fun cheers so let's do it together come find us at aarp.org slash near you
it's time to hit reset on HIV. Here's why sticking to HIV treatment, exactly as prescribed, is so important. It helps lower the amount of virus in your body to undetectable. There's so little virus, it can't be measured by a lab test. People living with HIV can protect their partners by getting to and staying undetectable. According to current research, staying undetectable prevents the transmission of HIV through sex. Talk to a healthcare provider and get reset at helpstopthevirus.com. Hi, welcome to 26 Health, Center Florida's LGBTQ Health Center. I'm Dr. David Baker Hargrove, President and Co-CEO. At 26 Health, we strive to create an integrated, multidisciplinary health center that serves all of our community through primary medical care, behavioral health services, adoption services, patient care services, and our Medispa. At 26 Health, we care for every letter. No matter how you identify, your letter matters to us. and welcome to Family Storytelling, Keep Your History Alive. I'm Marcia Hope Goodwin and a member of the Arts and Culture Subcommittee of the City of Orlando's Black History Month Steering Committee. Tonight's program is being recorded 
and will be available later. All attendees are encouraged to share their comments and their questions in the chat. After the workshop, we will respond to your questions. Each February, Mayor Buddy Dyer and our city commissioners celebrate Black History Month with our diverse community by highlighting the lasting contributions and positive influences of Black Americans in Central Florida. In an abundance of caution and to avoid the spread of COVID-19, this year, we're offering a series of dynamic virtual workshops and programs. The Black History Month national theme this year highlights the critical role that Black families have played and continue to play in our country. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the strength and beauty of African-American families as a core part of American life. We would like to thank our platinum sponsors, 26 Health, and our goal sponsors, the Downtown Development Board, Gilead, AARP, and the Orlando Magic. It is my pleasure to introduce a message from our mayor, Mayor Buddy Dyer, followed by welcome remarks from Orlando District 5 Commissioner Regina Hill and District 6 Commissioner Bakari Burns. Hello, I'm Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer. Welcome to our 2021 Black History Month celebration. Each year during the month of February, we come together to celebrate the lasting contributions and positive influence of Black Americans to our community. And although the pandemic has changed the way we come together, it has not changed our unwavering commitment to true change, which is why we continue to take actions and make investments to help end systemic racism and create an Orlando where every resident is equally valued, equally protected, and has equitable access to opportunities. I'm proud of the wonderful events and discussions our Black History Month committee has prepared for you that cover important topics such as educational opportunities for African American youth, mental health, faith, nutrition, entrepreneurship, as well as arts and culture. I hope you'll leave each event with increased knowledge from these engaging conversations and presentations. Thank you to all of our sponsors for the support to help bring these events to life, and thank you all for being a part of these important events. Happy Black History Month, City of Orlando. We have approached another year to celebrate the richness and strength of our culture. 2020s provided challenges for the African American community and even challenged our unification. But as a people and a community, we rose to speak stronger, cry louder, and herald harmony so millions would know that we are ready and resilient for anything that may come our way. This year's Black History Month theme in the city of Orlando is the Black family, representation, identity, and diversity. The Black family is known for its unity, its strength, its power. Over the next few weeks, the City Beautiful will cover a myriad of perspectives of the Black family. Things like the soul in our food and how it's not only filling to the body, but it's edifying to the spirit. The power of our faith in God. Sunday morning church in the black family is not just a ritualistic statement in our culture, but it's an experience with our creator and a communal vibrancy. The strength of our arts and culture. We are naturally creative people. Many have experienced this creativity in our music, our dancing, paintings, and so much more. Our empowerment, our forefathers and civic leaders have fought to give us so many opportunities today. Dr. Martha Luther King Jr. once said, commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. You will make a greater person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. Leaders such as Dr. King and his dream has provided opportunities for black children such as myself and others. As equality and equity continues to be the fight for the black community and move to the forefront of every major topic in America, empowerment in so many areas of the lives of African Americans will be realized even greater now. Manifestations of that empowerment are in the forms of a Justice Thurgood Marshall, a Condoleezza Rice, and a 
President Barack Obama, and even now, Vice President Kamala Harris, empowerment fulfilled. I believe this month, our city and those who will be watching and viewing will see Black History Month is more than just February. They will see, although magnified in a month, that our history here in the city of Orlando when it comes to blackness is 365 days a year. Black history is American history, and we are grateful to be able to share it with you. Happy Black History Month. Welcome to the City of Orlando's virtual celebration for Black History Month. I'm Orlando City Commissioner for District 6, Bakari F. Burns. This year, we are celebrating the wholeness of the Black family. Our families are often celebrated through entertainment, like television shows and theater productions, as well as depicted in movies and other mediums. But our families are more than just what's portrayed on the big and small screen. We are extraordinarily diverse, from cooking recipes passed down through generations to hearing, listening, and understanding the wisdom, pain, and joy from our ancestors. The Black family is an essential part of American society because of its multiplicity. The parts of Black culture that's often duplicated and imitated starts from the family. Our faith and spirituality, our ability to dance, sing, orate, and even laugh is passed down through our families. I hope that you enjoy this event and learn more about why the strength of Black families is so important. It's not only how we stand, it's our foundation. Happy Black History Month. The arts play a pivotal role in the African-American family and culture. Tonight's program highlights the value of storytelling in preserving our family values and our culture. Our workshop presenter is Valeda Fluellen. In 1965, the Cleveland Call and Post newspaper reported that Valeda Parker was, quote, the 13-year-old Cleveland girl who has been conducting a one-girl campaign to persuade the Cleveland Board of Education to place books about Negro history in the public schools. Today, that teenaged girl is Central Florida's Valeda Fluellen, poet, storyteller, and author of seven books. Valeda has traveled across the country sharing her poetry and her stories. She was contracted to perform her poems in 80 public schools in New Orleans, and she has performed at colleges, libraries, churches, and countless other venues. Her poem, Skin on the Rope, is displayed at the entrance of the Orlando Regional History Center's exhibition, Yesterday This Was Home about the 1920 Okoye Massacre. Valeda is a life member of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, ASALA, and she serves as the archivist for the National Black Golf Hall of Fame. She is an honorary member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, the oldest African American sorority in the nation. She's married to Thomas Fluellen, and they have three children and six grandchildren. Valeda's daughter, Toya, owner of IC Images Media, a studio in Winter Park, works closely with her mom. In fact, Toya produced the program we will enjoy in just a few minutes tonight. I'm pleased to introduce Valeda Fluellen, who will share her story and offer tips and suggestions for you to share your story and encourage storytelling to preserve your family's history. Thank you, Marcia, for that lovely introduction. And thank you, Mayor Dyer, City of Orlando, the County Commissioners, and the Black History Steering Committee for this opportunity to share my love for family storytelling and keeping your family, our family, history alive. Telling your story. There are many ways in which you can tell your story. I'm a poet. Oftentimes I use poetry as a way of telling my story, expressing how I feel about the world through my poetry. 
If you're a musician, your music might be the medium you use to express your feelings and to tell your story. If you're an artist, it might be your art. Today we're talking about storytelling and how the art of storytelling can be valuable, most valuable, in keeping your family history alive. I often have the fear that one day I will wake up with nothing to say. No new ideas, no quick replies, no sobs with the tears when I cry. And no opinion of what's in the news and no advice for my husband on which tie he should choose. Nothing. I mean nothing what I have to say. I'd look at life and decide, hmm, I'll take it that way. I won't try to change things. I'll leave things alone. Hear the ring? Not run to the phone. You'll ask me a question. I'll look in your eye and just shrug my shoulders and not reply. Yes, this is my nightmare. I wake up with this fear. But listen, I've got stories. So listen up, here. Now a man came from Mars and he wanted to know, uh, just what color is a Negro? Well, Negro used to be black, my friend till old Massa put his two cents in. Then we became all shades, my fella, while some of us became downright yellow. I mean, we became so many hues, folk got downright confused. And we started calling all Negroes colored. Black started taking on a negative tone. And we started wishing our black was gone. Then a mighty fine fella started shouting out loud saying we all black and we ought to be proud. Why he gave us a whole new point of view and accustomed us to our darkened hue. Well, we stopped wearing our hair bone straight and we went into what we called our Afro state. Fist in the air, we would shout out loud, telling the world we're black and we're proud. And we began to search for from whence we came and gave ourselves again a brand new name. African American was our new cry. So we never have to explain what color am I? That's the storyteller and the evolution of the African American. One of the ways in which I tell my story. I am Valeda Fluellen. I'm a poet and I'm a storyteller. What's your story? How do you begin to tell it? My suggestion would be Start at the beginning. Start with where you are. Tell it in your special way. Who are the influencers in your life? The people who most affect your life. How much do you know about them? The question I often ask to encourage a story is simply, What's your story? This allows the teller to begin the story wherever they feel most comfortable. It invites people to maybe share something that they have always wanted to share, but have never been asked the question, what is your story? What is that thing about you that you would want people to know? A listener's job is to encourage the telling of the story. Do that. Start with the people in your family. Many of us don't live in close proximity to our grandparents or great-grandparents, 
But thanks to technology today, there's a way that we can find out their story too. The telephone. Our cell phones are often on our person or somewhere near. And so today we are able to pick up the telephone and call and ask the question and get the story. So use that very convenient way of corresponding with the people who are the influencers in your life. They help you to better know who you are. Your, your life is really a combination of all of those wonderful people who have stepped into your space and enriched it. The more you know about them, the better you understand your own story. At least that's what I found to be true in my life. I've been fortunate to have some rather special influencers, one of which I'd like to share with you, his story. At the age of 13, I was a little precocious or rather precocious. I loved reading and my mom would bring home books from the library every Wednesday. And she started to bring me biographies, the story of African Americans who had achieved a great deal. People like Benjamin Banneker, George Washington Carver, Frederick Douglass. And when I read these stories, they made me angry. I was really angry. And the more she would bring home books like that, the angrier I got. I was angry because these were stories that I had never heard. I went to school five days a week and I never heard a word about these people. I heard the story of slavery and I remember squinching down in my chair whenever the topic in history came to that. But I had no idea that there were people who looked like me who had achieved these wonderful things and I was angry. So I decided rather than just be mad, do something about it. So this caused me to solicit the help of my parents' attorney who happened to be my piano teacher, who was a lawyer. And I asked Mr. Helm to please draw up a petition for me that says that Negro history should be taught in the Cleveland Public Schools. And he accommodated me. And I took the petition around and got it signed by everyone who came into my space. And then I made an appointment to see the superintendent of the Cleveland Public Schools his name was Paul Briggs at the time. And I talked to him about my concerns about the books not being in the school. And then not long after that, I noticed in the newspaper, there was an article about a man who right here in Cleveland had started a museum of African-American history. And I wanted very much to see it. So I begged my mom, please, can I call him? And she said, yes, and I'll never forget that telephone call. I can hear his voice today as he answered. And I said, hello, and he says in his deep voice, hello. And I said, hello, I'm uh, Valeda Parker. And I read in the paper that you have a museum and I'd like to come and see it. And so he invited me to come and my mother took me and I was so enthralled with the history on his walls and the shelves. Uh, it was just a room full of nothing but the story of my people. And I was excited. And so I asked him if I could volunteer to help and he said yes. So for about three years, I would go every Saturday to his house and I would, uh, well, I was supposed to be working, but I spent more time sitting at his knee, listening to him weave stories of the people on the walls and telling me about my history. And it was one of the richest periods of my life. 
our story is rich. And the more we know about it, the better we feel about who we are. Ichabod Flewellen is known as the father of the African American Museum. And my mother-in-law has chosen to tell his story. So she wrote a book about him. And my daughter and I wanted to aid her in that telling. So we published a film called If, If Only You Knew, Ichabod Flewellen, the father of the African American Museum. Shortly after the publication of my first book, Poetically Just Us, Jackie Perkins opened her bookstore, the first bookstore uh, for Black Americans, the first Black bookstore in Orlando, and it was called Moncho Books. Um, Jackie opened her bookstore, and I was a resident storyteller in that bookstore. And we had an opportunity to do a project together that I'm very proud of and that may give you ideas of how you can collect and share stories. Jackie received a grant to publish this book, Their Voices Beg for More, and she asked me to interview um, along with five women who were um, not readers. They weren't able to read but they were able to share their stories. So she had a project where the five women would go to nursery schools and they would sit down with the children and they would tell their story to the children. And I would listen to their story. And after hearing their story, I would go back and write the story of their experience telling stories to the children. And I wrote a little poem for each one of them. This is Dolly Takes the Feathers Off the Chicken. And the storyteller was Dolly Taylor. And I wrote a little poem to go along with Dolly's story. And then Margaret, New Mexico and the Maypole. Margaret told that story to the children and I wrote a little poem. Margaret took a ride with mom. It was pretty neat. Margaret and her brother in the back seat. Margaret sang the Maypole song, mom and brother sang along, singing songs and telling tales through Mexico and all its trails, was Margaret's story. And then Norris, the palmetto horse and the pickup stick. Norris played with pickup sticks, dolls and, made, and a make-believe horse. If she left her chores undone, she would hear her sister's voice, Norris, Come on in here and do your dishes, interrupting dreams and wishes, at least for the moment. Then Catherine, Catherine Rath. Catherine knew Zora was the story that Catherine told. Who would ever think a girl from this town would take what the people say and do and choose to write them down. Every joke, story, and game, a pebble on her road to fame, and I knew her. That was Catherine talking about her experience knowing Zora with the children. It's always a wonderful occasion when the elders are able to sit down and just share their life with the children. It was a wonderful experience for the children at the nursery home, and, and it was a most memorable experience for me. Perhaps their voices beg for more, may give you ideas of how you can collect stories. Where do I begin, you ask? Well, my advice would be to begin at the beginning. Start with the people who are closest to you, who is in your space, your parents, your grandparents. And just how do I start, you ask? Start with what you have. For many of us, that might be our cell phone. It's with us all the time. So how about using it? 
cost enough, use our cell phone, record. How do I get them to talk, you ask? Well, what I usually do is I begin with a broader question. What's your story? Often, that'll get people started where they feel comfortable with their story. Or you may need to be more specific. How was it for you growing up? Tell me about your school days. You may need to be more specific. But as a listener, you want to be affirming and you want to encourage the storyteller to tell the story. So be as creative as you can to get to that end. Now, in addition to the cell phone, I've often used a tape recorder, a taping device, and uh, a more elaborate one more expensive would be a device like this. It depends upon how serious you are about collecting um, the story. If you are uh, a researcher and you want to really delve into the story, um, but the cell phone is just fine. You can take a videotape of the person that you're, you're interviewing or whose story you want to, to get or you can audio tape, whichever is the most convenient for you. But the best advice is start with where you are and start with what you have. Make it as simple as possible. It need not be um, complicated. Use every opportunity, a family reunion, a family Zoom call. Think of creative ways to turn those events into storytelling events. Perhaps plan ahead. Appoint an individual for that um, Zoom call to be the person that tells the story. Uncle Harry, how about you tell the story next week? Some families meet frequently on Zoom calls. If you're not a family that does that, I would suggest you do do that. Give individuals in your family every opportunity to share their story. And when they do, be affirming, affirm their story. Storytelling keeps our family history alive. And it's one way that we can pass on the richness that is our story. You're encouraged to keep a journal if uh, you are one who are more inclined to write. I like to write, so I've always kept a journal. My earliest journal looked like this. This is where I wrote the year 1984 in my life. It's just simply handwriting, a, a composition book. So you might want to just keep a journal and let that be the way you tell your stories. Another, um, a more elaborate journal might look like this. Years ago, I gave as a gift to my father-in-law a journal similar to this one, and he began to write in it. And then I later asked him, how about recording um, your story so that we can share it with the family? Well, he took my advice and he did an audio recording of what became our family message. And he would share this message as a gift to the family at Christmas time. And in it, he would update the family on all of the good news that he had heard from various family members. And he would tell us about the current events that me meant the most to him, that were meaningful to him, events that he had read about in the newspaper. And he would always offer some sage advice for the family on how we could live our lives better and learn from the lessons that he has learned. Well, that was many years ago and now it's been about 30 years. And every year at Christmas time, our family receives a recording from Grandpa Thomas Flewellen Sr. And it's something that has become a library that our family can treasure. So there are many creative ways that we can go about 
telling our story, collecting our stories, using artifacts, a necklace. Grandma, where'd you get that necklace, that ring? Those inanimate objects become the source of stories. Use them. Pay attention to the people in your life. Pay attention to the things that they like. Use those things to be, get, to be the subject of stories, the story they tell. Stories help us to better understand and appreciate each other. So use it, storytelling. It keeps your family history alive. A story, a story. There is always a story. When there's nothing else, there is always a story. I have a story. You have a story too. And let me tell you, there is no one, no one in the whole wide world who can tell your story better than you. What is family storytelling? Family storytelling is a way to express feelings, attitudes, and responses of a person's lived experience and environment across generations. Now, according to the African novelist, Guji Wa Hongs, storytelling is retelling a tale or narrative to one or more listeners through voice and gestures. It is not the same as reading, he says, story, reading a story aloud or reciting a piece from memory. The storyteller recites and generates a series of mental metaphors and images associated with words. This means storytelling can be packaged in forms such as songs, music, dances, plays, dramas, and poetry. Stories may be sung along with musical instruments or on a certain instrument. Why is family storytelling important? Storytelling inspires you to learn about yourself and about the world around you. It reflects the social values, culture, and experiences that motivate people in their pursuit of a meaningful life. The oral tradition of storytelling enables the passing of cultural knowledge, history, and experiences from one generation to the next. African traditions as a, has a legacy of oral storytelling. Traditional storytelling in Africa reveals ideas, themes, beliefs, and facts that are widely spread. This tradition continues on the American continent as a way of affirming the African-Americans contribution to the building of America. Now, I believe that there are two types of storytellers. There's the storyteller who will tell the story and there's the teller who would if he or she were encouraged. I have come up with what I call my poetic elements of storytelling. And I've sort of defined storytelling as having three elements, the seed, the nurture, the harvest. Now the seed is the story, possibility. A story holds possibility. And when that seed is nurtured and the listener is very important to the story. So the listener provides that soil on which the story lands. 
which makes the listener as important to the story as the teller. When the story is told, it's being nurtured. The story is a gift that the teller gives the listener by relaying ideas, emotion, excitement, action. The teller is revealing for the listener his truths. And the listener encourages the telling of his truths through his attentive listening. That's nourishing the story. And once the story has taken place, the storyteller feels affirmed and the listener is uh, appreciative of this wonderful gift that the storyteller has given. And so they may express that, um, that feeling um, of thankfulness for the gift in many ways. Clapping. Sometimes you're so taken up with a story that you clap and then you're standing up, there's an ovation. And then again, sometimes you are so taken by the story that you are silent. All of those reactions are encouraging to the town. A story differs from a conversation in that there's no need for a reply. It's a gift, receive it. It's a seed, you are the soil and the story blossoms between the two of you. You know, our life is sort of captured between our birth and our death. The story of our birth is one that we would love to hear. And oftentimes mothers when talking to their children will talk about that wonderful day when you were born and all of the things that happened on that day. And it is our hope that when we are no longer here, the story of our life and the stories that we have passed on as gifts will continue long after we are here. So those of us who are blessed to be here have this wonderful task of making sure that there is a continuation of story. We exist as a people through our stories. One of my favorite poets is Paul Lawrence Dunbar. He died at an early age, but he left us in his story a lot of wonderful messages. My elements of storytelling were inspired by a poem that Paul Lawrence Dunbar wrote called The Seedling, and I'd like to read it to you. A tiny little seedling lay in its darksome bed to itself, it fell a talking, and this is what he said. I am not very robust, but I'll do the best I can. And the seedling in that moment, its work of life began. So it pushed a little leaflet into the light of day to examine the surroundings and to show the rest the way. The seedling liked the prospect, so he called his brother, hey, stem. Two other seedlings heard it and quickly followed him. To be sure the haste and hurry made the seedling sweat and pant. But before you knew it, it found itself a plant. The sun shined down upon it and the clouds they gave a shower and the little plant kept growing till it found itself a flower. Little folks, be like that seedling. Always do the best you can. Every child must share life's labor just as well as every man and the sun and showers will help you through the lonesome struggling hours till you rise to light and beauty. Virtues fair 
unfading flower. I love Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And he so do I. Yeah. So do I, Belita. <laughs> that was beautiful, Belita. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank that you. was fabulous. The whole workshop, I'm, I'm inspired. And I know that a, hopefully a lot of other people are as well. Um, I think that like many of us, our family is really our source and our family sustains us and is so very important to us and to, to hear how we can preserve all of the things that our family means to us is very important. So thank you so much. This was so inspiring and I had a great time just hearing and I know there's a lot more that you can share and will share with us tonight. So thanks everyone for being here and tuning in and hearing Valeda's uh, message, the recorded message. And now we're gonna have some time for some live in person uh, comments, questions. Um, and Valeda, we'll start with the questions and, and maybe get some answers to a few of the questions that we've gotten. Um, one of them is uh, wants to know, when did you determine you were a storyteller and what made you know? Well, uh, I, I was about to write my book of poetry, Poetically Just Us. So I was testing my uh, poetry with audiences. So I was invited somewhere to speak. I'm not sure where I was, but I remember on this particular day, after I did my performance of poetry, um, a gentleman came up to me and he said, you're a storyteller. And I looked at him and I thought, oh my God, what did I say? He <laughs> thinks I was lying. What, what could I possibly say? And he said, no, you are a storyteller and you're coming to my school. That man was Bill James. He was the principal at Orange Center at the time. And I did go to his school and I, um, I realized in telling the story to the children that this was something that I enjoy. So in that moment, he really changed the trajectory of my life. He affirmed that you were a storyteller. He did, and, and uh, that's why gave, affirmation. Exactly, gave you the opportunity to, to do that. And I know Bill James and I'm familiar with, with him when he was at Orange Center. So that's great, <laughs> glad to hear it, small world. Small world. Um, Couple of other questions. Um, someone wants to know, what is your favorite part of your family story? Was it what you shared with us when you were 13? Yes, that, that is that is a favorite part of my story because like Bill James, Ichabod Flewellen was someone who influenced uh, my life. My, he ignited my true love and devotion to storytelling and how important it was that we educate the children about who they are. And so, yes. Excellent, so, excellent. Okay, so Valeda, um, I also wanna thank uh, Toya, Toya for her work on producing the video. So I know that she had an integral part of making this happen. So we just wanna thank her and make sure she knows how much we appreciate it. Uh, your daughter and um, a, a very, um, active and successful producer. So we're really glad to have her involvement. So let me ask you a couple other quick questions. Um, I know that you prepared a booklet on family storytelling that you want to share with all of the uh, audience that we have tonight. Can you tell us a little bit about that booklet and what's in it? Yes, um, that booklet will um, contain the elements of story that I told you about, and also a couple of poems. Of course, my seedling is in, included in that, and um, my storytelling uh, techniques. Um, the technique that I use is, uh, I call Miss V, and V means voice, energy, and enunciation that those are three important elements in the presentation of a story. So when I taught storytelling to young uh, children, I used the Miss V uh, acronym to remind them of how important that is in the uh, presenting of a story. But the most important element is to be your authentic self. Let your voice shine through the story. Uh, and it's most appreciated when people are, are themselves because we're all so different and so unique. 
exactly. And I know that um, you have had experience over a number of years um, helping people, you know, to actually tell their story, put their story together and, and record it and, and share it with others. Um, will the resource guide that you are going to share with us have that information in it as to really how to the step by step? Yes, it will. It'll offer a lot of tips on where you can go to get assistance if you need assistance, um, the different things you might want to reference in terms of uh, books that I suggest mm -hmm. that you might want to read to help you in um, understanding your story, understanding our story uh, as African Americans, being that this is African American History Month. Um, and um, so yes, it will be a resource guide that will aid in the telling, particularly of the African American story because we are in African American History Month and this is the year of the family. So it's a good time for African Americans to learn about themselves and for the rest of the world to learn about us, to learn about our fantastic story that has not been as evident in the American story as it should be. So we have to fill in that gap and work hard to make sure that our voices are, uh, are heard. Definitely, definitely. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is new to capturing their family story? Start, start right now. You know, it's so important and, and one, realize how important you are to the family story. Oftentimes when we think family storytelling, we think about grandma, but uh, start with you. What do you think about grandma? That's a story. What do you know about grandma? Mm -hmm. Start with that. And then once you deal with what you know, you'll realize how much you don't know and you'll wanna fill in those gaps and make that applicable to all of the people who have influenced your life. How much do you know about them? Because your story is really not complete without them. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Uh, I think that oftentimes we forget that we're a part of the story. Yes. So we have to, we have to make sure that we're incorporated into the story. Exactly. Um, you mentioned uh, grandparents, and I think always grandparents are, are special to us. And uh, so often we find that we wish that we had asked them things or our parents um, when they leave uh, the earth. We want to know things that we didn't ask. So I think the, the time spent just asking questions and recording the answers will definitely help to make that story much more rich and more you know, include more of the details that we, we wish we had known that we, if we hadn't asked, we wouldn't have known. True. Um, so. You know, uh, I know you have some of the books that you recommend in your resource guide. And for our audience, I do want to mention that we are going to email you the resource guide when you registered to um, participate and attend tonight. We have your email address. So we will be sending that out via email to everyone. Um, but what are some of the resources that you recommend that someone who's trying to really get steeped in family storytelling and writing and telling their family story that they should read? Well, one of the um, books that I recommend is, well, there are several. Um, Cast, a recent publication by Isabel Wilkerson. I think that's an important book for African-Americans. She has uh, worked hard to tell our story and um, familiarize us with, the, with how difficult it was to get to where we are. So that background information is important. And um, another great part of our history that has been documented and we should know about is the Great Migration. And she also covered that in her book, The Warmth of Other Sons. So I'm a real fan of Isabel Wilkerson because of the hard work that she has done to familiarize us with who she, who we are. And she has um, 
use the resources that were available to her other African Americans like John Hope Franklin and um, you know other wonderful African Americans and non African Americans people who have been interested in our story and it, it's time that we become more knowledgeable about who we are as a people so that as we tell our story we know from whence we came and we can better appreciate those sacrifices and the sacrifices of people who have helped us to get to where we are so i think that would uh, give us a greater lens into the future when we have that um, in our um, in our repertoire and there are Excellent. other books that are listed here as well great thank you Valeda. yeah isabel wilkerson is one of my favorite um, authors, she's she's a, such a prolific writer. She makes you feel like you're there yes, she uh, as she tells the story. It's amazing. We have a few more questions, and I want to make sure we get through these. Uh, thank you, all of our participants, for submitting your questions in the chat, and uh, we want to get to them. So this one asks, how would you go about convincing family members to participate in recording their family story? Sounds like maybe a little bit of hesitance. <laughs> I think that um, you'd be surprised at how willing they are. First, you have to ask, ask the question and um, tell them why it's important. Use my resource booklet if you have to, uh, <laughs> but, but tell them how important it is that we know. And I know that African-Americans have family reunions all the time. And that's one of the places where we get to know and get to see each other. And um, I'm sure that many of you make storytelling a part of your family reunion, but if you don't, you should uh, make it such. Um, one of, four of the most important elements of the black family would be, we have four pillars in which our story stands. And I would say they are, God, family, church, and community. You know, our, our whole existence are built on those four very important pillars. So as we tell our story, we want to be able to express how important those elements are to us. As a storyteller, I was encouraged by my family to, to be able to do what I do. And that helped a whole lot. And I was also supported by my community, my church and my community. So when I went out to other uh, states, I was a little homegrown. You know, I had gone to Bill James School and then other principals invited me to the school. And the community, once you step out, things will fall into place because there are people who are willing to embrace your belief in your abilities. So once I decided I was a storyteller, I was getting offers and I grew as a storyteller. I developed my storytelling skills as a result of the wonderful principals who um, invited me to their school. So when I left town, I was ready. <laughs> That's awesome, great. And, and I'm glad that he did that. I'm glad he inspired you and affirmed you. Yes. So thanks for that answer. Um, the next question is, any suggestions for capturing family stories for immigrants whose matriarchs and patriarchs have passed away? For immigrants whose matriarchs, well, I think they might want to uh, explore genealogy, explore finding out um, exactly where they were. And there are many resources, and I've mentioned some in my guide that can help you with the genealogy, finding out about those, um, those members of your family that are, have passed away. I'm not as familiar with other cultures as I am the African-American culture because I've done most of my research in the African-American culture, but I do know that your best friend in the whole wide world is a librarian when it comes to uh, research. So don't hesitate to pick up the phone because you can reach them now by phone, you can reach them by email, or you can go into the library. But the librarian is your very best 
friend for any questions or any help. And, and they will be that affirming uh, force in your journey. Excellent, great advice, Valeda. thank you. So someone wants to know, how do I get my story published? Someone already has done their story, they wanna get it published. Well, there, um, depending on what your story is, of course, you can submit it to magazines and publishing houses and the internet is a wonderful uh, way to explore those types of things. I'm not a publisher, so I don't really um, know much about that. I would explore the internet and I would ask my librarian that question. <laughs> uh, and so the first step is wanting to do it and deciding that you're going to do it. Because we can always use the excuse, oh, I don't know, or where do I start? And uh, that's all it is, is an excuse. Okay, well, the librarian is going to become um, some of our best friend, I think, because he or she is going to have a lot of good information. Well, this is a question that one of our um, participants asked, where is the best place to purchase your book, Valeda? I have a website, um, valedafluellen.com. Um, so you would write me on my website. And uh, some of my books are out of print. My book, Poetically Just Us, is out of print. It's occasionally on Amazon. Uh, you may be able to purchase it. Um, I do have some copies of it. So uh, writing me is the best way uh, okay. to determine. OK, and we'll have that information. I know when we email the information out to all of the participants, yes. there'll be a um, contact email address for you. In there. Good, good. Perfect. Okay, well, someone also wants to know, are there any special skills that anyone needs to have to become a storyteller that records and keeps their story? Courage. <laughs> Courage. You know, no special skills because you are presenting your authentic self. You know, no one can tell your story better than you, you know? Uh, who was it? Uh, Dr. Seuss had something truer than true. No one is youer than you. Exactly. <laughs> so the story is about you. It's about you. It, it, and because it's about you, you're the expert. And so you can bring into, the, into that story whomever you see fit to bring. You know, once the storyteller begins the story, the stage is his or hers. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to begin, take the stage in your life, develop your story and bring in those influences to, to better enrich your knowledge of self. Yes, and I think, like you said, the hardest part is just to get started. That's the hardest you part. You have and to get started. Excuse, but um, it's not what we don't know, it's what we know. Exactly. Well, so we start with what we know and then we go. Yes. And it's easy to do. I, I uh, have a personal experience of recording um, even before we had our cell phones. So it was a little more challenging, but actually getting a video camera and recording my, my maternal grandmother, um, who was uh, at the time in her 80s and hearing all the stories about her life and how she grew up in Georgia and rural Georgia, what that meant, how that impacted her as an adult, why she moved to Winter Park, Florida, to have she and my grandfather for them to have their family life. So just all of the backstory that I never would have known if, if we hadn't done that. And um, it's an easy thing to do now with the cell phone. You can just uh, sit in, and chat, as you said, and the yeah. questions come very easily because we're curious about our family and our history. So that, that's very true. A couple other quick questions and, and then we're gonna um, ask you to close it out with a poem at the end. How about that? Make a sort of a poetic ending since that's what you do so well. I do, I always got a poem <laughs> in my pocket. Okay. Um, someone wants to know who inspires you? Who inspires you? Well, God, family, church, 
community, those pillars. I'm inspired by those four pillars. That's my story. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, those are, those are important things, I think, that all of us share. And, and yes. I'm glad to hear that you were inspired by it. Oh, one other question, someone wanted to know what was your first job? That's kind of an <laughs> off, off the wall kind of question, but we wanna make sure we include it. Okay, when I got out of high school, I went to the telephone company and I worked as an operator at Ohio Bell Telephone <laughs> Company when they were pulling down the things and I was operator and I got a chance, I guess, to um, experience voice and energy and enunciation <laughs> as yeah. a telephone operator. It was preparing you and you didn't even know it. <laughs> You'd be surprised when you sit down to tell your stories, the threads that connect and it makes sense to what you're doing today. So that's another um, benefit of, exactly. um, you know, of your story. Definitely. Okay, so one more question came in on the chat and I hope I didn't miss any questions, but this one asks a very interesting question. My hometown is Sanford. Why did you choose to write about Sanford? I fell in love with Sanford. I fell in love first with Eatonville because Ichabod had told me about Eatonville and about Zora. So um, then when I realized that Zora also was in Sanford, uh, I was curious and wanted to know more. So that was, I sort of, the dust tracks on the road, I followed them. Yes, I understand. Um, it's interesting, uh, living in Central Florida, for most of my life. It wasn't until I went to college that I learned about Zora. And I was very disappointed that I hadn't learned that history right here in Orlando. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Well, once again, we have a lot of history here. Uh, can I ask our audience, they're asking me questions, but I'm going to ask them if okay. they would write in the chat, in Orlando influencers. Let our chat be a historical record of people in Orlando that were heavily, that you were heavily influenced by. So if um, the members of our audience, particularly those who are from Orlando, would do that, I, I would love to read that. So okay. I mentioned my Bill James and um, I mentioned Moncho Books, Jackie Perkins, but there are many, many others and you know who they are. <laughs> so let's record that. Please, I'm seeing uh, Dr. Minnie Boyer and the Boyer family. Okay. That's a great one. Bring I know on, Dr. Boyer. Yes. Yes. That's a great one. Uh, Dr. Thelma Vivian Dudley. Yes. Geraldine um, <laughs> Senator Geraldine Thompson. Yes. Representative Thompson. Maddie Adams. Oh, all mm -hmm. right. We have to celebrate ourselves. We have to celebrate those people in our community who... Mr. Willie Howard, whose son is on with us, um, Ms. Mercedes Clark. Yes. Was a college classmate of my mother's. Charlie Miller. Yes. Yes. We all remember and miss Mr. Miller. Alzo Reddick. There it is. See, this is... And I are both big fans of Dr. Reddick. Are. Yes, oh yes. This is this this log is a testimony of how rich we are. Yes. Shirley, Shirley Boykin. Boykin. Yes. <laughs> yes. We we have some some great heroes and sheroes. Dr. Margaret, Margaret Miller. Miller. Dr. Margaret Miller. Exactly. Oh, someone said my mom, Jean Edge Evans. Oh. My heart. Oh. There's a picture of her right there, back there. Oh, wow. I love having my family pictures all around all the yes, time. Yes. I think we all do. Carolyn Fennell, oh, our dear yes. friend. Certainly. Yes. She's, she's our voice. Yes, boy. definitely. She's our voice. Wow. That was a very good question, Belita. Good thank for you. you. We got I think some... your questions are good too. Well, thank you. We got some really great uh, names and, and people that we all admire and adore um, that we saw. So thank you audience for sharing. That was great. That was a great, great way to, to sort of bring to a conclusion. I think our question and answer period, if 
If anybody has any questions that you think of later uh, as we're wrapping up, please still put them in the chat and we'll find a way to get the answer to you. We'll get, right. we'll get it back to you via email if nothing else. But this has been such a fascinating evening and so much fun just hearing you share how, how to become a storyteller, but also your own story, Valeda. It's, uh, it's really been interesting. So I, I wanna thank you for that. Um, and thank you for sharing your time, your talents, and just your passion for this. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Valeda for a long time, but working with her on this project has been really special. And someone just added Harriet Elam Thomas. Oh, yes. I definitely remember. one of our, yes. our heroes. Yes. Exactly. Uh, ambassador yes. Harriet yes. Elam Thomas. Her book. Yes. Read her book. Yes. A fabulous book. Yes. I recommend it. Yes. yes. She's a, a dear friend. So I think we got to all of our questions, most of them anyway, and I'd just like to um, give special thanks again to our uh, sponsors, especially our, all of our sponsors, but especially our platinum sponsors, Bank of America and 26 Health. Um, we couldn't do this programming without the sponsors. And on behalf of our City of Orlando Black History Month Steering Committee, we appreciate your participation and we ask that you answer a very brief poll um, that we will share about how you learned and heard about our events. We'll just take a couple of minutes for you to answer the poll that uh, you see on the screen. So if you would please do that for just a minute or two. Okay, I think that um, hopefully everyone had a chance to complete the poll. And several of our participants are sending in a few other names of heroes and sheroes, like uh, Commissioner Mabel Butler. Yes. Um, N.Y. Nathiri. Oh, yes. Yes, Father Nelson Pender. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All of those. And I hope I didn't miss anyone because they kind of flick, they they flash on and then they're gone. So I hope I didn't miss any. Oh, come um, on, fill up our library audience. Yes, exactly. Definitely, we agree that those are many of our heroes and sheroes. Um, so at this point, um, I'd like to share something new and exciting that uh, all of our participants should know about. Thanks to a generous donation by the Ritz Carlton, one person who attended our Black History Month events that have been going on all month will be randomly selected to receive a two night stay at the Ritz Carlton property here in Orlando. The person selected will be announced at the end of this month and will receive an email with the good news. So isn't that something for those for folks who are on the line and who were able to join us for earlier programs that we've had this month, all the way through the remaining programs that we have, we'll have the opportunity to actually uh, have a two night stay at the Ritz. That's exciting. Um, I hope that you've registered for our next Black History Month virtual program, which will be held on Thursday, February 25th. And it is the celebra Celebrating African-American Culture in Art, Music and Dance. It's um, a performance program featuring some of our local uh, talent in art, music, and dance. 
So we've dropped the link to register in the chat, or you can visit orlando.gov backslash BHM for Black History Month. So please do, if you haven't registered, please register and tell others, make sure you share this with others. And we really want your feedback. So we will be sending an email with a survey about your experience tonight. We really wanna hear from you because as we plan for future Black History Month programming and other programs, we wanna see what you thought about this one. We hope you've learned new ideas about why your family stories are so important. And we hope you gain some new tools, tools that will help you to really be effective and be the person who really initiates telling your family stories. Each family story is a part of our collective history. And if we don't record and tell our family stories, who will? It's important. So remember, Black history is American history. And if we don't tell our stories and record our stories, they will be lost. So we hope that tonight will be an inspiration for all of you to either begin telling your family story or continue it if you've already started. So with that, I think that I'd love to have Valeda close it out. Valeda, it has been such a pleasure having you on tonight. Thank you for your time and all of your inspiration. And uh, you and I talked beforehand about having a poetic ending. So thank you all for being with us tonight. Every one of you is special and your family story is amazing. So please don't let it slip away. Make sure you catch all of those members of your family that are aging, talk to them, get all of their answers and all of their information about what brought you to this place and this time. So thank you, Valeda. Please close it out with a poetic ending. We appreciate you. I certainly will. Make sure you know what you don't know about those you love. Eternity embraces the Black family. Its members are all grand. Eternity embraces the Black family. Dear Lord, you have helped us to stand. Against all that has tried to divide us, you continue to protect, to guide us. There were difficult times in our past, yet countless achievements are found. It is the strength of our Black family that gives us solid ground. From kings in Africa, it seems, to America's king, and his dream, from the message once told by the drums to the spirituals continually sung, our history is alive and made whole. For in every significant achievement, there is a black family story to be told. For the most powerful roots in history are those that anchor the Black family tree. Tell your story. Thank you. Thank you, Valeda. Have a great night, everyone. And thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>
Black History Month is intelligence, resiliency, integrity, acceptance, empowering, innovative, remembrance, identity, equity, freedom, love. 26 House wants to say thank you to all those who have come before us in the African American community and celebrate and embrace Black history. Together, we stand united as a community of Magic fans with a common passion and love for the game. We cheer together from our living rooms, chat rooms, and in the arena, on the court and off the court. Together, we are strong. Together, we overcome. We are Magic Together.
it's time to crack an egg. Easy. Any style egg works. Here. Or smile. Well done. This looks great. Time to share a story. We have a great way to start our discussion. With old friends or new ones. When you're a caregiver. Time to breathe in. And up. Good job. Then let it all out. Rah! It's never been easier to connect, learn, and have fun. Cheers. So let's do it together. Come find us at aarp.org slash near you. It's time to hit reset on HIV. Here's why sticking to HIV treatment, exactly as prescribed, is so important. It helps lower the amount of virus in your body to undetectable. There's so little virus, it can't be measured by a lab test. People living with HIV can protect their partners by getting to and staying undetectable. According to current research, staying undetectable prevents the transmission of HIV through sex. Talk to a healthcare provider and get reset at helpstopthevirus.com. Health, Center Florida's LGBTQ Health Center. I'm Dr. David Baker Hargrove, President and Co-CEO. At 26 Health, we strive to create an integrated, multidisciplinary health center that serves all of our community through primary medical care, 
behavioral health services, adoption services, patient care services, and our Medispa. At 26 Health, we care for every letter. No matter how you identify, your letter matters to us.